Good morning, Sheila. How are you doing today? Good morning, Wayne. I'm great. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. I just came back from a two mile walk. It was raining. Nice. Just refreshing. <laughs> Super. Yes. And welcome everyone to 27 Minutes with Sheila and Wayne, where we explore the fascinating world of verbs and their impact on our daily lives. Join us each week as we delve into the different ways verbs shape our language and influence our activities. As we attempt to make a positive difference in our world, one verb at a time. And Sheila, this is episode number 128. All right. Yay. Hey, I understand also that we have a special guest today. We have a very special guest today, and he has chosen our verb. And Hannibal, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you right now. Um, Hannibal Navies is leading the charge at Athletes Charitable as Vice President of Development. And Hannibal, you have, in the course of your career, after nine years of being an NFL uh, part of the NFL Brotherhood, you have um, founded 360 Sports Academy to teach youth uh, life skills and athletic skills and uh, academic skills. You were the director of engagement and outreach for the trust, which was sponsored by the National uh, Football Players Association, and that's helping uh, professional athletes transition from football into other walks of life. Wow. And now, as part of United Charitable, your mission is to make a positive impact in the world by empowering athletes through social entrepreneurship, one initiative at a time. So your mission is so close to our mission in terms <laughs> of making the world a positive place. We are grateful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And it's always good when missions align, isn't it? Good Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yes. So our big question is, how did you pick this verb today? What is the verb? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tell us tell us the verb and what made you pick it. <laughs> the verb today we're going to talk through is lead. Um, so we, we're, I guess the reason that verb came to me, I think, um, we, when I look at my life and look at one of the most important things, the most impactful things that kind of kind of got me to where I am and it's not always knowingly but lead lead was that was that word whether it's I was being taught how to lead or following a leader or those things I just thought it was super important to and I thought it was just such a great word and I obviously you talk you spoke about 360 uh, football 360 sports academy is my mm -hmm. foundation the, the tagline of that which I, I started years ago when I retired from football was leadership development through athletics so that's just always been my mantra, if you can be a good leader um, in many facets of life, then you can you can be successful. Excellent. That's Excellent. wonderful. And Sheila, how can our listeners find you? How can they email you with comments? Oh, thank you. Wayne, my email address is Zeke and Sheila at Yahoo.com. Zeke, of course, is my golden retriever who's <laughs> listening in. <laughs> and Hannibal, how can our listeners reach you? Uh, listeners can reach me at... Um, 360sportsacademyfoundation.com, or you can also visit me on my website at athletescharitable.org. Excellent. And our listeners can reach me at wayne at mindsyncing.com. That's M-I-N-D-S-Y-N-C-I-N-G.com. And again, all complaints and dirty thoughts come to me. All the good <laughs> thoughts go to <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> and Sheila, what did your research come up with you? How, how did you, what, what did, how did you find the verb lead and what was the definitions you came up with? I have two definitions here and um, Hannibal, what we find is Wayne usually has about six definitions. <laughs> so right. I'll start with my first two, uh, to guide on a way, especially by going in advance or to direct a course or action. Okay. And, and yeah, I have one, two, three, yeah, four, five. Yeah, I have yeah. a lot. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's my first one to control a group of people, a country or a situation. The second one is to be in front, to be the first or winning, especially in sports or other competitions. Another one is to cause someone to do something, especially something bad and especially mm. something good. Oh. To show the way to a, a group of people, animals, vehicles, etc., by going in front of them. Another one is to take someone somewhere by going with them. Another, to go in a particular direction or have a particular result or allow or cause. And I'm, the last one I'm going to say is to live a particular type of life, leading a good life. 
Ah. All mm. those were fun. Sheila, what did you think of the verb when when you found out that Hannibal wanted to talk about lead? What was your first thought on lead? My first thought, it's so hard to talk about the verb lead without also talking about the noun leadership because because uh, they're so tied in with each other. And uh, there's a lot of research done about leadership. But uh, mostly I think I'm excited that to lead is a skill you can learn. It's not just something you're born mm. with, although you can also be born with leadership skills. <laughs> okay. About yourself, Wayne. My thoughts, I I was extremely excited because, you know, I, I know one or two things about leadership. Not a right. lot, but that's OK. Mm -hmm. But I'm very passionate about the verb. And y you know what? It is a great verb and we all learn it. Mm -hmm. at a very young age. And I'm going to give you an example of that. And, and Hannibal, I want you to chime in here um, silently. I'm going to ask us a question. Everybody raise your hand who has ever played follow the leader. Raise your hand. Hannibal, is your hand raised? <laughs> hand is, my hand is raised. And she, is your hand raised? My, my hand is raised. Okay, excellent. See, kids know this because now put your hands down. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have ever played the game. Follow the manager. <laughs> Sheila, is your hand up? It is not up. My hand is not up. Hannibal, is your hand up? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something different between leadership and management, and we all learned that at an early age. Everybody wanted to be the leader from kids, so they so they know that it's something big. Hannibal, what was your first sight of leadership? When did you know that you were being led or that you were leading? Um, I didn't have to go too far. I mean, I was, I was, I grew up in a household with a very strong leader in my father. So, I mean, I, I, uh -huh. I didn't have to go far uh, to search it and probably at the time didn't even know how powerful I was being led. But um, it's, it didn't, like I said, I didn't have to go far or search far and high to find a, an impactful, motivating and powerful leader in my household, which is my father. And sounds like an inspirational leader as well. Absolutely. He, he didn't just, you know, I think it all starts at home. I think the thing about leadership is it it starts internal and, and it can, can go external. So I mean, it always starts with yourself, leading yourself, but then leading your family, leading those around you. And then that grows to leadership in your community and leadership beyond. Right. And that's how my father led. So he not only led his household and his children, um, but he was a very, you know, he's a leader in the community and, and, and was seen that way. And he was able to lead and motivate. Excellent. Excellent. That's a great start in life. You bet. And, and you know, taking the lead means nothing if the title is the only thing that you bring with it. And so in my in my research and I didn't have to go too far, but in my research, I found as a leader, you have a you have to bring a skill set that is demanding of every aspect of that important role. And and Hannibal, chime in here if you, if you need to, want to. Um, I have a list of, of things that I think leaders need to do. I, one, I think they need to be a communicator. Anybody agree, disagree? Sheila? I agree. Yeah, definitely agree. Okay. Another one is, and this ties into communication. However, I always like to separate it because some people don't remember that this word is also under the auspices of communicator. You have to be a good listener. I'm sorry, what did you say? Have just to be a good kidding, li just listener. Kidding, just <laughs> no, no pun intended, huh? <laughs> okay. I, I, there's this word that I love, and I look around, and I'm reminded every day, because as I go on the internet, as I read newspapers, listen to the news, I see that this doesn't happen. A lot of people walk the talk, but they do not walk the walk. The word that I'm thinking of that a leader has to have is integrity. And I define integrity as the quality of being honest and of the highest ethical and moral character. Any thoughts on that, Hannibal? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with you. Integrity, I mean, some people, there have been plenty of leaders in this world that we can all speak of that have not had integrity. But the leaders that, that I speak of, that I try to raise or motivate or be myself, definitely have to have integrity, have to have character. I mean, for people to follow you, they have to know that you're able, like you said, you know, just telling us um, what's the best thing to do, but you're also living that lifestyle. So that integrity is, is super important. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. indeed. Uh, any any other thoughts? Because I have a, I have a list of, of other words here, other, <laughs> other thoughts. I, she, can I just I think, go ahead? I'm sorry. I think a good one thing that people <clears throat> um, I think is missed when it comes to leading is uh, a good leader is somebody who's a good follower as well. Mm. Um, so learning how to follow 
um, learn how to be a faithful follower and somebody you that means you have you've had experience um following good leaders you know i mean your your leadership comes from somebody you have to have an example to give you some kind of leadership and being able to follow is super important because you know when you become a leader you want to lead um, you're going to have people that you have to motivate that are going to be following you so you mm-hmm. have to understand what that means to to be that leader and also be a good follower before you become a good leader you have to learn how to follow you have to learn <laughs> how to learn you have to learn how to do those things and so before i was a leader in my household i was a follower like it sucks my father was a was the leader of my household, but I had to learn how to follow. And there's been several examples in my life where you have to listen and you have to learn how to follow before you can become a good good leader. And I'm stretching that word off my list because it is here. So I think Hannibal has looked over my shoulder here on Skype. And saw, <laughs> <laughs> saw my I, list there. <laughs> Sheila, you were going to say something. Well, uh, it reminds me of a quote by uh, um, John Maxwell, who's written several books about leadership as well, who said, a leader is someone who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Mm. Oh, yes. And okay. And I have a quote too. Hannibal, Sh- Sheila enjoys quotes. And I Sheila, Sorry. <laughs> Sh- Sheila makes us sound good. A friend of mine <laughs> named Xavier says Sheila makes us sound good. And she always does because Sheila, she does the, that in-depth pondering, <laughs> that in-depth research. And she comes up with great nuggets and great bits of information for us. So I follow her lead sometimes on <laughs> quotes. And here's one that I like from Ronald Reagan. He says, leaders surround themselves with great people, delegate authority, then get out of the way. Mm. (laughs) And I think that is so true. And much like on the football field, um, your coach can only go so far. He or she cannot make the play for you, can they? Absolutely. No, they cannot. They can only coach you. When it's on the field, it's up to us to take the leadership that we had and go out there and execute. Yeah. And and how how do you employ that with the groups of individuals that you talk to now? Because I, I I've seen you on the on the web where you're talking to I think it says um, freshmen um, freshmen yeah. NFL players, right? Yeah, rookies. Yep. Yes. And how do you, how do you convey that kind of a message uh, of what we're talking about today to them as they embark in their NFL careers? Well, I I just embark and you know talk to them about. You know, I talked to you guys earlier about leadership being first starting with yourself um, and not always, you know, communication is a big, big part of leadership, but every leader doesn't have to be the rah-rah guy in the room, doesn't have to be the loudest voice in the room. Sometimes the best leaders are the ones who who listen and lead by example, right? So mm-hmm. the leading by example thing is kind of, I take it hard because I think for a long part of my life, um, I wasn't a big a uh, vocal person, but I was I was definitely a person who led by my actions and led, you know, uh, like I said, led by example of what I was doing. So I always encourage the young men and the young women and the young athletes that I speak to, you know, to take yourself, to lead yourself first, right? T- take the time. You can't lead a group of people. You can't lead a community until you learn how to lead yourself and walk the walk. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I talk to them a lot about that and just being aware of you know, as a leader, uh, you know, people are watching you. People, when people are less expected, you know, people are watching you. So you have to work when people are not watching. And, and that's, the, mm. that's the biggest thing that I really try to convey to them is that the work that you put in, you might not think that people are watching and, and seeing what you're doing, but people are watching what you do, especially if you're a leader. So these are the things I really try to convey to the young rookies coming in. And also, like I said, find a mentor, find a leader to lead. I think that's super important. You know, like mm-hmm. I said, being a follower, of a good leader is super important because it shapes how you become a leader and how you can step up and how you grow into your role as a leader. Exactly. And and I think I heard you say, and this is on my list, I think I heard you talking about a concept of building relationships because Absolutely. a leader has to do that. A leader has to connect those dots and let everyone know the value that each brings However, putting that value together, you come up with such a, a more a more of a solution, a more positive, more creative, more dynamic solution that's going to, wow, make everyone <laughs> happy, it, except if you're playing football. The uh, One team's not going to be happy because <laughs> they're going to be the losing team. But the, the winning team is the one that builds those relationships and everybody is out there playing f- with and for each other. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, every, every, especially in sports, especially in football, especially. I mean, I played on the defense side of the ball, a linebacker. So my role and my job um, wasn't always to make the play, but sometimes it's, it's to set the other person up to make the mm-hmm. play. So everybody depends on each other, and you have to be willing to be a part of that team. Like I said, leaders, there are leaders in, on teams that aren't the big known person on the team making mm-hmm. all the plays. Sometimes the leader is the person that's willing to do the work 
to get everybody else the accolades and the shine that they have. So leaders come in many different shapes, form and fashions. So that's why I really love the word leader because it doesn't look like just one person. Because we hear the word leadership, we think of presidents, we think of ambassadors, we mm-hmm. think of you know, all these different people in this high role of leadership and the, the people at the podium. But leaders come in all shapes, form and fashions and do so many different things that really um, push up and, and really make teams work, make companies work. I make households work. So leadership comes in, like I said, there's so many different styles of leadership. There's not just one style, but I think, like I said, you, you spoke about it earlier. One of the biggest things is, you know, having that integrity and having that consistency and having that accountability in football. You know, when, when we all make mistakes and we all are not where we're supposed to be on, on the defensive side, when you do that, uh, leaders step up and be accountable to that, right, and, and move on to the next one. And, and people that follow you, they respect that, and that's what leaders do. <laughs> now, I, I heard you say something that sparked a memory that I had. So, Sheila, I apologize, and, and Hannibal, I apologize. I, I got to tell this quick story. Can I okay. tell a quick story? Sure. Yes, yeah. okay. A friend of mine, because you, because Hannibal, you talked about you're a defensive guy, you're a linebacker, and so sometimes you set up the play so that somebody else could make the play. A friend of mine was a great high school footballer. And I asked him, I said, well, how come you didn't play in college? He says, well, I went out for one practice. And I said, well, what happened? He said he was a wide receiver. He said he went across, he went down and out, did a Z out and a Z in and came back across the middle. He says the middle linebacker stood him up after he caught the ball and somebody else hit him. And he said he hit me so hard that my numbers fell off my jersey. So he was Ouch. done with football. <laughs> uh, football is not for everybody. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes. Sheila, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just really appreciating what Hannibal, what you were saying about um, different shapes and sizes of leadership and how sometimes the quiet person, but what's consistent about all of them is that they're they're living how they're teaching. Yes. Right. They're living how they're leading. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's, to me, right, and like I said, there's so many different leaders because there's there's positive leaders, and some people see some see people as leaders that are that, you know that use their leadership in the next. I guess it's not positive and negative leadership; it's how you use your leadership, <laughs> right? Um, and how you want to impact people with your leadership is really where the positive or negative comes in. But I, I just think that leaders are people who you know consistently just you know consistently there and just aren't just talking to you about it, but are doing what they mm-hmm. actually preach. And I think that's super important. I can't, you know, you, you can't get people to buy into what you're doing or to want to listen to you or want to follow you or want to be motivated by you when they don't see you doing the things that you say that you're doing, right? They right. don't want to see you talking about success necessarily when you haven't shown that you can be successful and haven't done the, the things to take to take the steps to be to successful yourself. So, I mean, it's just a, and I think it's really, like you said earlier, you know, walk it like you talk it is super important. Yeah. And it just comes along with leadership. And a lot, like I said, a lot of leaders do it a lot of different ways, but I think that's the commonality is that a leader should be doing what they preach, right? Or should be doing mm-hmm. um, what they want their followers to do. And sometimes they don't necessarily, like for me, a long while, um, I think I've been put in leadership roles now, but, you know, there's a long time where I didn't realize and didn't wasn't walking in my path as a leader because I just didn't look at it that way. I was just, mm-hmm. you know, part of the guys, a part of the team or whatever. But like I said, you, you lead by example about how you show up to work every day, how you're yep. consistent in what you do every day, um, how you treat people every day, how you speak to people every day. That's all leadership qualities that if you're yeah. consistent in how you do those things, people will follow and notice those things. So that's, you know, those are, those things really mean the most to me when it comes to leadership is the consistent um, walking the walk and the consistency in that walk. That's a great message to give young leaders too. Absolutely is. And Sheila and I talk about this a lot, Hannibal. Um, there's two two other skill sets that I have here on my list. One is respect and one is trust. Respect and trust is a two-way street. It is not just coming from the leader or from the subordinate or the follower, if you will. It's, it's, it's both ways. It's directional. It's bi-directional. If, if the leader doesn't respect you, um, then you're certainly not going to respect that leader and you're not going to do what they want you to do. Trust is the other component in that. You've got to trust both individuals. I've got to trust you to go out and do your job. You've got to trust me to do my job and stay out of your way that you, you can get the job done. Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's trust is, you know, without trust, and I think trust is 
is a, is a very important word that underlines leadership, but it goes, trust is obviously in a lot of different relationships, but leadership is relationship, right? Leadership is building mm-hmm. relationships and being personable in, in any relationship, especially as a leader, it's trust. You know, I have to trust that what you're saying is, is true to be able to put down what I what I necessarily think is right and believe in what you're telling me. And, and those kind of things come with trust. And then, like I said, that's any relationship. If they don't trust you, it's kind of a break in the leadership. How do you follow somebody when you don't really trust what they're telling you is the right way to go about doing things or what they're saying is true. And uh, so yeah, trust is, is probably one of the other most important words that comes along with leadership. And I have two, I have, I have what, about eight others, but here's two more. <laughs> okay, go for it, man. <laughs> one is I say, and, and these are not in, in the correct order. I say a leader has to be accountable. So mm-hmm. accountability and responsibility. Now, those two words, a lot of people sometimes think they're the same thing. Responsibility is totally different from accountability. Accountability means you're answerable. Responsibility means if we succeed, yay for the team. If we lose, it's my fault. That's responsibility. And accountability is, okay, why did this happen? Why did you make those decisions? That's You have to be answerable to someone, but you have to be responsible to the overarching goal mm-hmm. of what it is that we're trying to do. A leader also has to be patient because not everybody gets it the same time or the same rate or with the same intensity. Any comments on that, Sheila or Hannibal? I think patience is super important. And we, when you given all these, these words, I think about different kind of leaders and every leader doesn't have every one of these qualities either, mm-hmm. right? So it's not like a leader has to encompass all these things because we're human beings. And so every right. leader doesn't have everything down packed, right? So every leader is not a perfect person. And that's another thing that we have to remember a leader is not a perfect person. We're all humans. We, Absolutely. And we, so we all have chinks in our armor. And so I yeah. think it's it's just um, as you go through these words, I, like I say, it would be great to have all of these qualities in every leader. But I think, um, you know, I, don't, I think that some of these exist in some, some may, may not exist in others. And, and you're exactly right. And as I used to go out and talk to kids uh, about leadership, as I used to go out and talk to um, corporations, if you will, executive level coaching if you will, I talk about education and ever learning because you're exactly right. Not everybody comes to the table with a single set or a a total set of skills. You got to learn those over the years. You've got to realize what your limitations are, what you have, what you don't have. Surround yourself with good people who have those qualities. Mm -hmm. And as you're surrounding yourself, you need to be learning how to add those skill sets to your own I, I guess, quiver of arrows, if you will, so that you can go out and do more and do do, do much further, further. And you also have to ever learn. You've got to not stop learning. And here's one quote that I like. A lot of people have said it. I didn't say it. A lot of people have said this. Leadership is definitely understanding that you are not the most important. You are not the most smart. You are not the smartest person in the room. A leader has to know they are not the smartest person in the room about everything, because as you said, Hannibal, so eloquently, um, we all don't have all of those things on my list. Right, right. right. <laughs> but we can strive. But we can. It's a worthy goal. We can strive to go there, can't we? We absolutely yes. can strive. I mean, that's the whole thing. Is, is leadership is. I think you just hit the nail on the head. Is leadership is ever evolving. A real leader mm-hmm. knows that he has to continually grow, has to continually work on himself and be better. Uh, you know, a real leader knows that you want to grow and, be, and a real leader is humble. So a real leader knows that you're going to continue to learn. That's not the smartest person. And a real leader learn, knows how to surround himself with the right people and, and take information from the right people, continue to learn, continue to get better. So I, I think leadership is ever evolving. You know, I am an ever evolving man myself and I continue to try to work on myself to be better every single day and be better to people every single day. So I know by no means a complete, a evolved final product leader. And I don't, I, you know, I think every leader should look at themselves as an infinite beta, just continuing growing and continue understanding, continue to learn people. People are evolving, people are, everybody's different and there's different kinds of people, right? So you have to also have a leader who understands every, every person is not the same. You know, how mm-hmm. do you understand people that you're leading? How do you understand them? How can you motivate them? Because everybody's not motivated by the same things. Everybody doesn't have the same emotional mm-hmm. intelligence, certain, or the same personality. So a real leader knows how to understand people and, and, and different types of people and different ways to motivate and, and understand it. And the only way you understand the people is to take the time to listen 
and take the time to be humble enough to say, I don't know everything is try to, you know, and, and want to take the time to understand each individual person that they're dealing with. So, uh, you know, leadership is so many uh, branches of it. You know, I just yeah. talk about all that. That's why I love the word, but it's, uh, it's not just one, one thing. And that's why I love teaching it to the kids because sometimes the kids don't see themselves as leaders. And when you talk about leadership in a very broad way and start explaining what leadership can be, then they can start seeing themselves as that leader as well. And that's yeah. the most powerful thing about leadership. It's not everybody can be a leader, right? And and right. you can, you know, some people are born with it, but some people learn and, and work at being the leader. And that can also happen. So I want these young the people that I do in my foundation, I really want them to understand, like, Lead yourself first. By leading yourself first, you're growing to who you are as a leader. People will follow. When you lead yourself in a positive way, people will follow. And I'm going to scratch humble off of my list. Because <laughs> you already said that. That's great. Because he did say that, yes. And and I'm going to I'm going to suggest one. I'm looking at the clock. We are at 2553. So we have just a couple minutes left. Okay. And then we have to really exit here. Um, so I'll, I'll just go. Two, two more things I have, and then I'll let Sheila and Hannibal end us here. I say a leader has to be a person that knows how and when to say thank you and a good job. And Hannibal, you just quoted a um, Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. I'm not sure if you knew that or not, but he says, our chief want is someone who will inspire us to be what we know we could be. And you just said that as well. So, golly, go! You, you've looked on my paper here. I'm, I'm, I'm ripping my paper up because everything, everything I want to say, Hannibal is saying it. <laughs> and I would turn it to you two for for closing and and getting us out of here. Thank you very much, Hannibal. Do you have any parting shots? No, I, I know we have like ten seconds left. I just appreciate you guys having me on, talking about such a powerful word. Um, yeah. And I hope that you know, people can listen to this and understand that everybody can lead some way, form or fashion, even if it's one person, if it's just yourself, everybody can be a leader. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I feel like I've just taken a master class in inspiring leadership. So thank you both. And thank you for the folks who listen to us too. Absolutely. Thanks, Sheila. Thanks, Hannibal, for being with us. Absolutely. I appreciate being on. Great time. Okay. okay. Right. Bye now. See you next Bye. week.